Hello and welcome to Impro News. Uh, we have tonight an interview with Playground Club. These are these wonderful people. Uh, yeah. Hello. Um, may you introduce yourself? Uh, where are from? What's your name? Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Norbert. I'm from Frankfurt. I'm Nadine. I live in Würzburg. My name is Ben and I live in Cologne. And you're playing together. We are now in Amsterdam. And you were invited to the festival here, to the International Impro Festival. And you played two before yesterday. Yeah, we played the opening night on Monday night of uh, the late show. That was uh, pretty exciting. Yes. Yeah. Our, our show is called What If I Told You? It's about secrets. And I think we started working on it two years ago. When, Around that. Yeah. And we come together from uh, time to time. Yeah. And then we keep working on the forum. So you don't play it on a regular basis, you play it uh, mainly on festivals, or where you play it? Mm. We played it mainly on festivals, but we did it also in Cologne and uh, Würzburg, so just regular theaters. So. Yeah. And what's the secret on, uh, of your secret <laughs> format? I think it's a, it, was a, it was a little journey. We, we, uh, we started to work on life games some years ago, and then we uh, Developed stuff like uh, how to how to deal with real stuff, with real persons' lives. And then uh, we developed another format like true stories, called true stories, uh, where we get some, some yeah true stories from the audience, not from us. And then it developed furthermore, and to say okay, everybody of us has, has got secrets, obviously, and. Uh, it's exciting to work with secrets because everybody, you know, you don't want to get it into the open. But here you have the chance to write it down and to anonymously put it on stage and to see something happen with your secret. And I think that's, uh, yeah, it's a challenge to do that. I'm, I'm personally interested in why we hide secrets. And I think it's um, a lot connected with fear of not belonging to a group and to um, shame and guilt in general and I think it can be very pathetic if the secret is revealed and nothing happens, like if it's still fine and I, I think, um, yeah, also when you play the show in different countries there's different variations on secrets so it's also I think a measurement of the culture you're in which I think is really nice. Yeah, for me it was uh, a combination of both. I think it can be a huge relief when your secret is read out loud and then you realize, oh, maybe it's not so bad. And you hear other secrets and you think, oh, man, oh no, yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> it's okay to have secrets. Yeah, it's okay to have secrets. <laughs> other people have them, we, we belong. Um, but it's also this, uh, as an improviser, I uh, get up in my head a lot when I have people on stage. Uh, we do shows now where we play scenes with audience members. Um, we interview audience members. And it's always a challenge. And this adds to it as well. When you have a secret, um, suddenly it has more weight. Because suddenly there's something real. Yeah, I, I want to add to this as well. I think it's. Uh, because we focus so much on the content because we want people to not feel exposed with their secrets so that sometimes the improvisation gets harder because we really want to make the content look good. Yeah. Yeah. I think this it's the most dangerous show I play mm -hmm. because you, this is really a show where you can fuck it up because there are real secrets out there and it's uh, you know, I think you have to have a, a loving view on the secrets and not like uh, I'm judging you. Yeah, uh, and that's because you can hurt somebody. Yeah, audience. of course. Mm -hmm. And if you do a regular show and you say, "Okay, give me a, a place," and you do a, a scene in Rome, nobody cares. But this is important. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. So yeah, one, yeah. one of the first things we worked on, on for a long time is we have the secrets in a small book um, that they collected in there, and we take our time uh, to pick one for the next scene. Um, and in the beginning, when we started the show, we would comment just by reading it. We would already have something in our voice or 
add something to it, like a bar. <laughs> uh, uh, and this might already be too much for the service. Sometimes I make myself more pressure when I'm on a festival. I think every, every improviser knows that. Whoever played on a festival, it's more pressure because you know, they know how it works <laughs> and they see the mistakes you make. That's the thing for me. But otherwise, it's, it's the same. For you? Uh, for me, it's also different sometimes when I know a lot of people in the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, and I share secrets because we also share secrets uh, in the show. Uh, it feels different because afterwards you meet those people again and it's not like, okay, this is... <laughs> For us, we, we really try to take a risk ourselves in the beginning so that it's kind of uh, a signal for the audience that we're opening up as well and sometimes when you know it's an improv community, I think more about what to share because I know they might know people that I'm talking about and you know there's a lot of this going on for me and also sometimes on a festival I feel a bit more judged but that might be just in my head. But is it uh, how important are festivals like this one like the it's the 20th anniversary of the Amsterdam Improv Festival and how important is it for you to go to festivals and meet other improvisers? Very important, totally. Um, it's a lot of the festival shows happen because you go to festivals. Yeah. A lot of connections happen because you go to festivals. And a lot of new ideas spring from seeing others uh, and how they do it on festivals. Um, we've, we've toured Australia uh, for a festival, but around the festival so many things happen and so many connections were made that now some of us have gone back and forth to Australia. Um, people from Australia came to Germany um, and this this heightens uh, the importance of the work. I think for me it's also it's always nice to see the different styles and approaches, and in some way I sometimes feel validated to also question a lot, but also sometimes validated to be like, okay, that's our choice, and I know why we made these choices, and it's true for us. So it's the only way we can play, even though I like their style, but it's not my voice. Yeah. And I think, I really appreciate seeing different voices in the community and different, um, different styles, different truths. And it's interesting to see uh, how different the audiences react. Like in Australia, it was, it was totally open and uh, the reactions were really big and they, sometimes they were really blew me away. Um, yeah, it's, everywhere it's different. Yeah, for instance, here in Amsterdam, after every show, no matter how great or um, not so great it was, there's no encore. It's just really efficient. The show is over and people clap. Some might stand up, but they clap. That's cool. I love that. The, the, MC, <laughs> the, the MC comes up and then it's over. There's no encore, That's there's good. no second bowing. Um, and that was really different in the beginning, but, but I like it a lot. Uh -huh. Because you have a really enthusiastic reaction right after the show, and then bam. So German festival should be like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. What I really like about this festival here, it's my first time here, and what I like is the variety, um, even in the ensemble that they put together. Like bringing in more exotic groups, like bringing a group from the Philippines. And I, I think I like the intention of don't just circle in your own little universe, but be like, what else is out there, and what could we learn, and if we mix it, what is the new language that comes out of it. I like that. And I've seen, I've seen, so far, I mean, it's only been two days, but I've seen shows that I, I really like, and 
Uh, I also, I'm a big fan of the experiments that happen in a festival like that with people who kind of know what they're doing, they bring their own experience and then they experiment together and you see that it adds to a new level. Yeah. But is it on the other hand not maybe a problem or a risk to lose a normal audience, people who don't improvise or not so into the improvisation, seeing a show maybe by experts trying something um, it fails because maybe it's the first time on a festival that didn't work so well. Um, I, I like it a lot because we, I think we all see a lot of improv and it's cool to see really risky new stuff because they think, okay, that's also possible. But um, because when we do an interviews, we, we write about improv and we always write on a, a level of experts looking on something. We talk about how it works, do you, do you mechanics behind it. Uh, but how can we bring more normal, let's say it again, uh, uh, viewers or audience to the show? Because I think that's really a thing for everybody. But because it's a young art form and I think it, it should be more um, brought out to the world. Well, I think, first of all, that failing is part of the fun and improvisation if it's done well. And so if you if you set up an experiment and you, you make it public that it's an experiment and everyone is in there being like wide-eyed and exciting, excited, then it's that's part of the fun of watching it no matter what they try. And I think it doesn't matter if I'm an improviser watching that or a normal audience, that's one thing. And I think for me also on the other hand, I'm like my goal with improvisation would be that it's an it's a a headline, a title, like theater. And when people go to the theater, they also don't just they say, they don't just say I'll go to the theater because they are like they know it's a different thing if they go to a school's theater or to a performance art or I don't know to a comedy show that you know. And I think it should be the same with improvisation that people don't just make a decision to go to an improv show, but they are like oh so what kind of style is it? And then they pick and if they like performance art, then they they might like something that is, I don't know, maybe more like the action theater we saw last night, that is more reduced and more working with pictures and But, but did um, the audience really do that? Because my experience is often that people say, yeah, I saw it raw, I don't like it. And I say, it's like saying, that. I saw a movie, uh, I don't like movies. <laughs> exactly. But that's, I, I think, the idea has to get through that there is there are different levels of, of quality, of course. It's like, as you see in, in movies or in football, you can see a football game in your hometown and it's crappy, but there's still, you know, there's the Champions League and it's fantastic. So, uh, and it's the same in the And I think that's, that has to come through, but that's our job for the next 20 years, I guess. And as you said, it's still a very young art form, and I think we're all working on this to make it a more, a more, like, um, like, I like looking at improvisation as a toolbox rather than this is an own art form. I think it's theater or it's comedy wherever you go to or it's performance art and we just use improvisation as a tool. So I would want to be a little step on the way towards people perceiving improvisation as not, oh, it's impro, but it's, or it's, you know, and I think oftentimes people are not lost. I've met quite a few people now that said, oh, I've, I've seen improvisation 10 years ago. And then you start talking to them. And in the end, they come back to one of our shows. Uh, and then it's our responsibility to do a good show. Um, another thing is we try different things. You can try having a Groupon deal to get audience in. Or uh, like Norbert said, maybe have a rookie show for a main show um, to make them see, okay, there's a difference. And regularity is also another thing that's really nice when you can say, okay, we play here every second Sunday or something. What, what, what the stuff you're working on, or what, what's inspiring you, what do you want to do in the, the next 10 years or 20 <laughs> years? Uh, what, what's, no, what's you working on now? What's the goals you want to reach, the visions you have? Share your secrets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just my own goal is to be honest on stage, to get more and more honest on stage. 
because I think that the first years are just maybe like most of us, most of the improv I see, is just like fucking around with topics I don't really care about. It's just, there are no connections between people and stuff like that. And I did it, I did all that, and I still do it. <laughs> Shit. But um, my personal goal is to be honest on stage in every moment. And maybe I'm there at 20 minutes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, for me, it's also like, um, I'm also fascinated by the honesty. And uh, I think for the last year, there's been a lot of clowns work that brings that into improvisation. But then also, um, I really like, I'm, I'm really fascinated with how to bring content into improvisation and how to be able to the content, I don't know how to say that in English, but um, to control the message more. And I think for me that always means like working on my abilities on stage so that I that that I I make sure that the message works. Like we for example we've been talking a lot about what if we get a secret like I like I like to have sex with kids, you know? And then we're like now we have a responsibility to take a stand on this and not judge, but also not say it's okay, but like how do you deal with this? And if you're like, okay, let's play a scene, mm. it's it's too much responsibility. Mm. So there's been a lot of talk of how do we make sure we get the message right and how do we how do we get better to be able to do that? Like that. That's a little bit of thing of the performer and the performance. So in your opinion as a performer, the performance could be something different. To show something I'm just showing and have another opinion as a being. It, uh, it might be. I think it's, it's basically um, because as improvisers we are writers, we are directors, we are actors. And I think we focus a lot onto the acting part and onto the let's write a story together. And I think I'm really interested in writing the story together that we all feel like this is a story we actually want to show. And it takes much more skill because you're developing it in the moment. Yeah. For me, I made the decision two years ago to do this professionally. And on this journey, there were a lot more shows, there was a lot more failure. Um, but recently, uh, there were really good conversations also with people from other art forms. So my driver for the next years is also exchange and the truth in that. Um, so I'm starting to work with an opera singer. Uh, I am working on dancing <laughs> with that scene. And I, I want to travel. I want to keep traveling and go to places where improvisation is done in other ways. Um, yeah, and then add to the shows we're doing here with those experiences. I think it's um, better than we could ever ask for. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, thank you. That's it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for thank watching. And we say goodbye to our few uh, listeners. No, that's watchers. Uh, uh -huh. Audience viewers. Yeah. Viewers. <laughs> yeah, that's right.